Today, begin by taping your traced tree and cornfield painting onto your drawing board. And then we're gonna begin mixing. To mix today, we're actually gonna be making an analogous color scheme um, for our work. So I'm going to begin by blending together our sky first. So for the sky, um, it's a little dull, it's intense in some areas. So I'm gonna begin by using cobalt blue, which we haven't used that blue yet before. Um, to pick up a lot of pigment, I'm gonna be using my um, number M small mop brush. And then add a touch of cyan blue, just to give it a little bit of intensity. Cyan blue is going to be the blue that we're gonna be using throughout our entire color mixing process. The next color we're going to blend together is going to be the grass. To make the grass, we're gonna do equal proportions of the light yellow and cyan blue. For the muddier colors in our grass, we're going to actually combine ultramarine blue, crimson red, and then the yellow ochre. This will help create a nice neutral um, brown that we can add into our grasses. For the darker value on the corn, we're going to be using ultramarine blue again with crimson red, yellow ochre to make it a purple, and then we're going to add in black to give it a really nice dark shade to the hue. For the colors on our tree, we're gonna be combining the crimson red with the Indian yellow. We're mixing all of these colors first because we're gonna be putting them all at the same time to create a nice, beautiful, variegated wash background. Like I said, we're gonna be putting on dry brush techniques over top of this once it dries. To create the darker red-orange that we're seeing in the tree, combine deep crimson with Indian yellow. We want a lot more in deep crimson than we do Indian yellow. And then to create that into more of a tone, we're gonna to be adding a touch of the cyan blue in there just so it's not so intense. This will also help darken the hue of the color. Now we can begin painting. For this technique today, we're gonna to be using the variegated washes that we perfected last week in our flamingo painting. But then to build up the detail in our painting, we're gonna be um, dry brushing in all of the details in layers, while also probably using a little bit of glazing as well. So to begin, you want to grab a uh, clean cup of water and also your large mop brush. Dip your mop brush into the water and then apply water everywhere around the entire picture. Remember this is uh, meaning to wet the paper and you just wanna make sure you don't create a puddle of water, just a nice dampness on the paper itself. If you feel like you do have a puddle, um, you can always dab the extra moisture off the brush and then go back in and re-swipe, removing extra water. Once you have water everywhere on your canvas, then you can start painting in the sky. I'm using my smaller mop brush and I'm going in with my combination of cyan and cobalt blue. And I'm just going to start painting this in as streaks. And I did not mix enough. It's already drying on my palette, which is not good. So I'm just gonna quickly remix it. And I'm only putting pigment in where I see blue in my sky. Notice I'm painting it in in the distance or the width that I'm seeing it, and I'm leaving white gaps in between to show the um, space for clouds. Even in the tree, I'm allowing the blue to escape inwards because I wanna create that illusion that there's little pockets in the tree of where the sky is showing through. So you're going to wanna make sure that you do this as well. Here the sky is a little bit lighter, so I just added a little bit more water to my um, blue. And then on the bottom, it comes out a little flat. See some pockets of blue in my sky back here. And make sure that for this bottom part of the sky, you are doing horizontal strokes. This is a great area where if you feel like you've put something in and it's not quite looking accurate. Um, you can always do the lift off technique where you clean off the brush. I'll show you real fast. So I'm cleaning off the brush and then I can lift off pigment with my clean damp brush to remove pigment in areas where I feel like um, I shouldn't be having it. But, and I'm not quite seeing that yet. 
We never want to overwork a surface, so I'm getting to the point where I'm just about done with adding my blue in. And there, I'm gonna let those colors blend together. So if you're noticing that the bottom of your canvas has dried a little bit, just take your mop brush and re-wet it. I'm gonna continue working on this upper section um, while this is still wet, so these colors blend into one another. First, we always paint with our lighter value. So the lightest value that I'm gonna be painting in is going to be the nice bright yellowy oranges of my tree, which I did not actually mix together. So I'm gonna quickly mix together some yellow and some of the Indian yellow together. And I'm just going to do little tiny indents on the highlights of every section of the tree. It's very important that you put your highlights in the right spot because this is going to help give definition to the three-dimensionality of the tree. Next, I can go down to my darker orange. I'm not even gonna clean off the brush because I want these colors to blend into one another. And I'm gonna start putting this darker orange in the sections of where I see it, overlapping it in some areas with the yellow I'm not trying to get perfect detail, I'm just get, getting color placement in this. So this is the great thing about variegated washes is that you're really just trying to create really interesting color combinations. If you run out, remember that mixture was a little bit of crimson and more Indian yellow. As I make these marks, I'm trying to remember those color family marks that we made for our river scene painting where I'm pressing hard to make the dad, medium to make the mom, and then tiny little marks to make the kids. So make sure as well, um, whenever you're painting this area, that you're repeating those same types of marks into the work to create your tree to be a little bit more realistic. And once again, make sure you're putting this all in when this section is wet. If it's dry, like in some areas like here got a little dry, I'm not gonna get those harsh changes. So that's why it's, you wanna be working fast. Next, I wanna put in this like muddier reddish um, orange color that I'm seeing in the areas of where I have my darker values. Notice I'm leaving that pocket of blue. So every mark that I put in, I'm putting it in intentionally and where I definitely see it. I'm not just going in here hoping for the best. I am making smart choices, methodical choices, because I want my tree to look three-dimensional. So where I have these really dark, deep shadows, that's where I'm putting in this muddier, reddish orange tone on the tree. Next, I'm going to move on to the top of the corn. For this, we're gonna go straight in with yellow ochre. Maybe a slight tint of a yellow ochre. But before I paint that in, I'm going to reapply some water down here because this is getting a little dry. So I know if I would put paint in there right now, it would not blend, which is what I don't want. I want it to blend. So I'm just gonna re-wet that surface. I'm making sure that there's not a puddle of water. So actually I'm gonna scoop up some of this water that is getting a little bit too much down here. Great. And now I'll go in with that slightly tinted yellow ochre and I'm just going to slob that down for the tops. I'm leaving a little bit of a gap um, on between the sky and the yellow ochre and then I'm creating more of a tint of that yellow ochre as I paint to the left. To get the darker value, we're going to begin first with our, not first, actually, we're just gonna go straight in with this um, shade. And I'm going to concentrate this hue to the very bottom part of my um, corn stalks, paying attention to like the movement in this line. 
and then painting that all the way down. Making sure I'm not painting it up too much because I don't want to get rid of um, the detail on the tops of the corn. I don't want to lose that highlight. Okay, next I'm going to start putting in the grass. So as always, we want to start with our lighter color. So that's going to be the yellow. So I'll start putting in that yellow. And this is a really fun way to paint. You know, it's fast. I'm not trying to be too perfect. I really just want the colors to blend into one another and create these beautiful transitions on the canvas. When I put in this yellow, I'm trying to make little short hatching marks, varying the angle of my marks to help create this illusion of grass. Now that that yellow's in there, I'll start going in with my yellow green and I'll start applying that in to my painting only in the sections that I'm seeing it. So, you know, notice I'm not putting it there because that's where I have a shadow that we still have to actually mix our colors for. So we'll have to mix that in a second here. That'll be an easy one to mix. So to create that shadow, I'm just gonna add some cyan blue to that. And then we have to tone that down. It's a little too intense. So I'm gonna go in with some deep crimson. And once I have that nice dark deep shadow, I can put that into the cast shadow in this area. I can also use that to start putting in the darker shadows that I'm seeing here in the grass. Can kind of see that there's like a little line that goes back and then connects to the tree. Darken up this value in here. Now for this, um, it kind of has a little bit of this um, darker hue that we have, but it doesn't, it's not that much of a tone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to remix it using the light yellow, a little bit of the cyan blue, and then a little bit more of the cyan blue, but this time I'm gonna do some ultramarine blue. I'm using ultramarine blue because it's not an intense blue. It will help create a darker blue without adding intensity. You can see how that actually helped create like a nice little bit of a, a tone there. And I'm gonna put that in the darker grasses in this section. Maybe I'll add that into the shadows here to help pull those out. I don't wanna to do too much of that. And I'll start using my yellow, just straight yellow to help fade that together. And there we have it. That's gonna be the, the blends that we have for our tree. Um, you know, if you feel like you wanna add a little bit more of a reddish orange in the tree before it fully dries, um, you know, go ahead and do that. I kind of felt like I was missing the vibrancy there in the tree, so I'm gonna quickly put in a little bit more of this bright red. I'm also gonna go in with some straight Indian yellow just to pull out the nice intense warm tones that we're seeing there. It got a little too dull, I noticed in my tree. Now only do this if your tree is still wet. If it's dry, just stop. Um, we're not trying to do a wet on wet or wet on dry technique right now. It's just wet on wet. We want these colors to blend into one another. So like I said, if you are pigment is still wet, feel free to go in to keep doing this, these variegated washes. Um, I'm actually gonna go straight in with my yellow, truly really pull out those highlights, because I'm definitely missing those on the right-hand side of the tree where it's catching the most amount of sun. And then I'm gonna stop and I will move on to the next step of my painting tomorrow.